sound sagas. What do we want it to be? Uh, I kind of had this idea in my head for a while of doing a podcast format, uh, which I'm happy has kind of evolved into like this video mm -hmm. hybrid thing. Um, thankfully, with your help, I mean, mm. and Andrew, I know you've been interested in something like this too. Yeah, um, both from the video filming production aspect of it because daytime career or I guess nighttime as well as <laughs> photographer, videographer. Yeah. Um, I have the ability, but had no, had no, had no channel or venue to, to really launch something like this. But it's interesting that we're doing a podcast that's sort of like a YouTube channel first. Right. Yeah. And, that's and I like that yeah, multi-channel, multi-format idea. Mm -hmm. um, but to use this as a venue for community based around our love for music, right. um, our appreciation of it, and trying to learn more about it from other people, want to get guests, want to get, you know, as much kind of input from audience as we can, uh, making it into something that kind of lives as a living, breathing document for, you know, what's going on in music and what we think about it based on our context, based on our histories. Uh, there's just a lot of cool stuff we can kind of throw into this music soup that we're going to make. And yeah. I'm kind of excited to see where it goes. Yeah, I've always been like so... I've always been so like non-discriminately interested in music. Like there's so few things that I just don't really like. Yeah. I mean, like I when I got into music journalism, I think I was interested in journalism because of how broad you could apply your taste or your interest to it, right? You the, the headroom's almost unlimited. Like whatever your tastes are, whatever you can be an expert in, you can go that far. Right. And write and share opinion and discuss and be involved at that level, at a deep level, um, in a wide gamut of things. Now, to be to like fair, like I listen to mostly heavy metal, like that, I'm a metalhead. There's no way around that. I'm not as in tune with pop culture, indie rock, other stuff, a lot of electronic music. I do dabble in electronic. I do like singer songwriter a lot. Um, I have various other tastes and interests. You see a Tom Waits record up there, like, but at the same time, you know, living in the metal world, I kind of compartmentalize, but place goes so deep and you've probably noticed this too in, in your spaces like you can keep digging forever yeah and we have a lot we can learn about too like mm -hmm. i plan on doing the research i know you do yeah there will be plenty of things to deep dive into that we know nothing about which is exciting on its own yeah and like just to, to foreshadow we can foreshadow the next episode you know we both selected a band uh that is formative to us but also we think is is a showcase of a style uh, that anyone could sort of with context enjoy and like check something new out yeah uh, the funny thing is they're very different <laughs> very different uh styles of music but i think that contrast is very interesting right and yeah the through lines are definitely there for yes having them both be accessible in their own ways exactly so, and their impacts and we'll mm -hmm. talk more about it but both have great stories as well yeah great uh, stories great kind of backgrounds and um, with sagas in the name right like stories are kind of narrative is sort of the bedrock right right this is how we experience music is when we when we socialize with our music friends and folks uh we are telling stories <laughs> yeah all day uh, that's how it works there's gonna, definitely going to be sagas to be told yeah um, and i'm looking forward to kind of uncovering some we don't know about or probably a lot we don't know about and that means putting you know individuals like between us like mm -hmm. physically here in the studio and talking to them <laughs> And figuring out more and asking good questions, right? Like that's part of it. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. So a lot of a lot of this will be based on our experience, but a lot of it'll be based on other people's experience. Again, a lot of it should be based on comments we get, stuff we get submitted. Uh, we'll be keeping along alongside this, you know, supplemental stuff, socials, blogs. Right. Uh, there's just a lot coming, and frankly, kind of too much to talk about. <laughs> in one episode, but hopefully this is a good launch pad for, you know, getting you all kind of turned on or turned off to the concept. And I think quality being like, like that's what we shoot for. Definitely. I think, I think the best channels, the best, the ones that you always go back to, I'm, I'm sure everyone has their list of YouTube channels they kind of go back to, right? Um, and discussion spaces and stuff. And the ones that you go back to, the ones that perceive, you perceive as like being the highest quality. They might not be the biggest ones, but you just like, they they go that level, they go that far. Totally. Uh, we definitely want to do that. 
Like that's, and we want to try yeah. to, it'll be on a schedule. Um, I think, I don't know if we're decided on bi-weekly yet, but. We'll figure it out. Somewhere We'll have there. some cadence so you can be clear on expectations on when you're going to get new content, stuff like that. Yeah. And it'll always be kind of fresh and different. Yeah. Um, yeah. We'll take the show on the road. Once we get that figured out, tech, like technology wise, we, we have the, we have the tools, but uh, we just got to get crazy enough and do it. No, but, we're, we're excited yeah. to explore all avenues of that as well. Yeah. I mean, we're based in Chicago too, so there's plenty of venues to go to, stuff to see outside. Uh, hopefully that becomes a big part of it. I think so. I, I want to mention, like you heard earlier in the episode that we're this show is based in Chicago. We live in Chicago. Uh, we want we want an element of locality to the to Sound Sagas, right? Mm -hmm. Like we are from this place, we're of this place, and we will we will showcase this place, right? Right. Uh, this is not a we're not limited to Chicago in any measure, right? Like no, and you're from Ohio, I'm from I'm, Florida, exactly. So we we're not even from background. Chicago, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, we lived here long enough to be like I consider myself a little a bit. Local, yeah. We're a little bit. We've been here a little bit. Uh, we'll, we'll put it that way. Yeah. Um, but uh, I think I I could not describe my experience with music fully enough if I did not consider how much Chicago mattered to that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's imperative. It is. That we mention and talk about it because yeah, it's been such a huge influence on both of our experiences. Mm -hmm. And you can extrapolate like every city has an identity. Every every place has a vibe. Absolutely. Um, music wise. And you can tap into it. And I like I don't like compartmentalizing my my library or my bands based on where people are from. But like you can sort of like understand a New York black metal scene or the West Coast black metal scene, for instance, as different stylistically. Um, totally. And that's I mean, yeah. th that's some future episodes right there. Exactly. Like, I mean, I mentioned to you before, but, you know, all the bands in New York in the early 2000s was a huge part of what I listened to for mm -hmm. a long time. Um, and, and everyone kind of builds their little scene and then it sounds the sounds that come out of that right. are contextual. So yeah, there's a lot of kind of exploring to do with that sort of concept. I think peeling well. the layers is a big concept that plays into how we're going to kind of explore sound sagas, right? Yes. The it's onion like, of music. Yep. Yep. The onion of music. It does make you cry sometimes, doesn't it? Makes you cry. <laughs> makes you scream. Yeah. Makes you stink. <laughs> <laughs> that's, well, that's true. I, as a metalhead, I can tell you that there is a stench involved in the experience sometimes. Yeah. I mean, a bunch of people in a small <laughs> room, that's, that's going to do it. <laughs> Not all the time, though. It's, the, the stereotype is quarter true, maybe. <laughs> quarter true. Uh, but this is like, when you get a bunch of people in a room, it's just going to stink, you know? Yeah. Any genre, this is how it goes. Um, it all comes back to the onion of music. It does. Absolutely. <laughs> it's part of the experience. And I think, I think experience is like, that's, that's the, that's the only thing that's ever going to change you. And that's the only thing that's ever going to let your taste in music evolve. So to give you guys a new experience, like for instance, seeing two dudes with completely opposite tastes kind of break things down. And we both at the same time experiencing new things right in front of you as we, myself and will share music. Um, but also just to be able to like discover new stuff. Like you got all your venues, you got Bandcamp, you can find stuff on, you get recommendations on Google and Spotify. Mm -hmm. If this is your first foray into getting a more curated sort of selection of music, then welcome. But it's always nice to have a couple like lower key channels, right? Not just oh, yeah. the big feeds. There's yeah. no shortage of ways to find music out there. And hopefully this is just a way to, what SoundSagas does for you is a way to either find community or find some direction on stuff you really want to look for, mm -hmm. places you really want to look. Um, because we've been through that so many times of trying to Absolutely. find those people, find those bands. And I mean, a lot of times it just happens to you. I mean, I know there's a, a guy on TikTok or Instagram who this whole thing is like, this band's going to have 500,000 Spotify subscribers next year, then throws up the, the five or six bands he, he's found. Mm -hmm. So hopefully it's a more unpacked version of that sort of right. thing, but across bands, genres, labels, things like that. So, yeah, I think having like a, I think what I always say is like put effort into listening to music, but that effort means like, like things that you don't initially like or think you'll like, I think that's the hardest thing to do, but the best thing you can do. Right. And that's what I've been trying to work on my whole life is like, that's when I put effort into appreciating music, it's when I'm listening to something that I don't think I'll enjoy or just don't know much about and trying to like 
get into it and build into it, right? And turns out most times trying something once is always is usually worth it. It is, yeah, because then you know. You you know, yeah. and then most times it's probably fine and enjoyable. Yeah. And it's never gonna hurt you. No. Yeah. No. It's... Yeah, I, I might I might pull out some scary looking albums on this show, but don't <laughs> worry, then nothing's gonna hurt you. <laughs> yeah, there's no like uh there's not actually a pit of corpses or anything like that you're gonna no, fall no. into. Yeah. Not um, here at least. <laughs> Who knows? And I'm below <laughs> this floor. <laughs> now, um, I think the expressiveness of, of music matters a lot. You know, like like how uh, how visceral it is. At least in my case. Yeah, it, it yeah. kind of defines what some people think about the world mm -hmm. and like you know what expression means to them. Right. I wonder how much we measure music on like just how visceral it is. Like. Did, I mean, that's a hard yeah. measurement to, to take. But like how how intense it is, maybe. These are like yeah. very like soft words, right, mm -hmm. to define. But another part of, you know, exploring on Sound Sagas is like understanding how people consume and enjoy music. Yeah, right? trying to get our thumb on the pulse of yeah. what matters. <laughs> yeah, like there's a technical way of describing it. Like people use Spotify or the Google Play or whatever they use. Mm -hmm. And then there's more of like the sociological way of saying like, are people, what's word of mouth mean now? Like, right. For instance, for me, like my, if I have people like you included, uh, if they send me an album, it goes to the top of the queue. Like I listen to it right away. Yeah. Yep. Like I, because those are always the best recommendations is from someone you very much know. And so hopefully by getting to know us a little bit, you'll <laughs> exactly <laughs> fall in that category. Yeah. Yeah. But it is interesting, though, like what is guerrilla marketing now is different mm -hmm. than what it was right. 10 years ago, five years ago. I mean, it does feel like some bands try to market to you as if you're like their friend. Mm -hmm. um, and you can kind of get into parasocial relationships and stuff then, mm -hmm. too, to bring it to a sociological yeah. standpoint. Yeah. Um, it's always it is interesting. And yeah, I mean, same goes if you recommend something to me, it's usually fire. So, yeah, that goes to the top. And it, yeah, I mean, there's. I'm sure you all have friends in your lives like that. Um, but there's no shortage of music out there and no shortage of new stuff. That's the I'm world. still catching up on old stuff. Yeah, uh, We didn't necessarily grow up in a situation where we could get access to anything we wanted at any time. Um, it was, I mean, it wasn't the hardest compared yeah. to how hard it may have been before our time, but uh, definitely easy now. Like the situation is whatever you want to hear, you can hear it. One, it has right just a, a different problem of overabundance. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And, you, you know, all your, all your inputs, where do I go? What do I exactly. listen to? What do I do? I mean, we were on the cusp of having that with the internet. Um, and I was lucky to have some local stores and stuff near me. Right, record shopping was big for you. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so it was less, less hard than it what could have been. Right. Definitely a lot to uncover there. Yeah, I mean, like, as you can, as you guys can, as you guys can, are kind of picking up, like, we are, we're trying to like take Sound Sagas as an extension of our our personal like love and interest in music. I think it's the only way to make it really survive. If we try to build yeah. it as some artificial like machine to generate content, we're not really in it. Getting the meat of it. Yeah, and exactly. It's an appreciation, yeah. labor of love type thing for sure. Yeah, and that 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 has to be built in, and I think it is. Yeah. Yeah. Let's uh let's do the thing. Change gears. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do something fun. We so, have a we have a box on the table. I had this game from a company. It's called the Unstuck Unstuck Box. I think the company is called called Unstuck. But yeah, it's like cool kind of strategies and um, businessy ideas. Basically, like uh, concepts. Yeah. So yeah. we can kind of take these cards and apply one to something to do with music or to what we want. Out of Sun Sagas. We're going to riff. We're going to yeah. riff off of things. I'll, I'll do the first one, actually. Sweet. Let's see what we get. Random pick. Yeah. Oh, this is a good one. Let's do it. Uh, illusion of control. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> um, they put this in the leadership category. Yeah. We all overestimate our ability to control events. I mean, yeah. <laughs> if you don't something know that. <laughs> we deal with a lot, yeah. and I'm sure everyone does. Yep. Um, um, it. It, the illusion of control occurs because we all seek to exert control over our lives. Yeah, yeah, that's true. This all right. This card game is like well, it's not really a game, but like 
that's you picked a good one because that's a big big thing yeah for so much i mean a huge exercise anyone sh can do and i know i have done a lot mm -hmm. it's just like remain calm yes and try to appreciate that things are going to happen you'll duck and roll and you'll have to be done with them and let them go there is a uh not, in not all situations, but in some, there is a forgiveness. There is a buffer where you can let go mm -hmm. and the situation will still turn out, right? You yeah. can let go of some of the... I mean, I would say yeah. nine times out of ten. At least if, some, you, yeah. if you know how to let go, yeah, it will turn out fine. Absolutely. The control element is hard, though, because when you get artistically involved in something, and, and especially if you have a vision... You know, that's hard because you it is you want to achieve that vision. But I know many more horror stories of mm -hmm. artists being overbearing rather than artists being accommodating. Right. In this regard. Yeah. Like if something goes wrong with their vision. Or their exactly. Work. I think I try to think of it as like, let's say I was writing an album or, or helping create music. I think of like my input or my artistic vision. I am only massaging the final product. I am only like helping the final product become a certain way right. i'm assisting in that process i'm not creating the specific idea of my vision although right? i mean i'll yeah. i'll take that and up the ante if mm -hmm. it's your project mm -hmm. and you want to have control of it you just have to recognize there are limits right and and just coming to terms with what you're willing to kind of be okay with mm -hmm. and then where you want to draw some lines mm -hmm. and even those lines are lines in the sand yeah so you have to be ready to move them Hopefully it's not as hardcore as the one that you snatched out of here. <laughs> totally random. Ooh, checklists. Yes. Well, that's important to us too. <laughs> I like a good checklist. Let's see what's on here. Checklists can help us to organize, manage, and complete tasks. I mean, now it's talking about like pilots have checklists. Right. For obvious reasons. And we've had that conversation about redundancies built into planes. Absolutely. We did in a, in a, in a, Earlier iteration of this of this episode, uh, we had a discussion regarding uh, why planes might have two or three of the same instrument right in the cockpit. It's because like right. build in redundancy to your process. Like this means if you're recording guitar in your bedroom, like do two inputs. Like yeah. record into a recorder and record to your computer just in case your PC. Yeah, I mean, yep. if you have two cables and two inputs, yeah, why like, not back it up? Back it up. Like it'll save you because you'll be writing the greatest riff of all time. Yeah. Uh, and you will lose it because your computer. Right. Can't, exactly. And so many horror stories of lost audio, lost yep. video. I mean, things like that, they don't stop you from achieving your dream. They just make it harder and make it more frustrating. Right. And checklists help reduce the frustration of like the process. And they help you have more control because if you have redundancies, then you know you can redo things or do things cards differently. Definitely together. Go together. Yeah, absolutely. Man, kismet. Take the honor. <laughs> I'm gonna probably take a card, any card. It's gonna be dangerous. I like the middle. Uh, Maslow's hammer, uh, problem solving. It is tempting if you only if the only tool you have is a hammer to treat everything as if it were a nail. Good one. Yeah. So Maslow's hammer is what that concept is called. I didn't know that. Once we have found a tool that works, we tend to stick with it. Uh, the cognitive, cognitive bias coined by Abraham Maslow is also known as the law of the instrument. Mm. So over-reliance on a single tool. Um, yep. I mean, tools of the trade, you know, we're using particular mics here on a tour. People use particular guitars, particular cables. Uh, you just need to kind of have a, your tool set. And if they aren't, if they aren't meant for that use, find the use they're meant for. Right. Um, there is an, a, a flipped coin side of this too, which like the chef Alton Brown uses where you want to have multitaskers. Exactly. But like the, like the principle says, you never want to be using a hammer to screw in a screw you wanna, yeah. or to hammer a screw. You yeah. Wanna, you want to use a screwdriver. Yeah. Um, Basically it's like, you know, you don't, don't get so convinced that everything that you have to do what you are doing artistically is everything you might need or the right tools. Right. right? Or, or sticking yeah. with a process that clearly is frustrating or exactly. hard to work with. Yeah, but if you're trying to hammer in a screw and that ain't going in, like you gotta you gotta change up, right? You yeah. gotta you gotta take something that you might be comfortable with and undo it. 
Well, I'm definitely guilty of this too. Yeah, we uh, are, yeah. Like in the past, I used to think I could do everything myself for creative processes. Mm -hmm. And it definitely hindered me on some projects where like, I was like, I'll just do it all myself. Right. It'll be free, it'll be cheap, or it'll be <laughs> free and cheap, <laughs> um, but it'll just be like better. But it wasn't, it wasn't. I mean, I should have just found the right person for the job, gotten it done, mm -hmm. knocked it out. Um, so yeah, I mean, another kind of solid Good lesson, like concept. Know when, know when something's worth having someone else do, mm -hmm. right? Now your situation might differ based on money and abilities and resources, but if you have the capability and it just makes sense to have someone help you do something, like you're not spoiling, I don't think in most cases, any artistic vision, you're just- Totally. You're, it all comes down to time. And I was gonna say yeah. when the, more, the busier you get and the more successful in whatever creative things you find yourself doing, you get time becomes your hottest commodity. Absolutely. And like us sitting here is literally a a illustration, an illustration of like, we wouldn't be sitting here if we weren't going to commit the time or the effort that it took, right? Like, right. you know, it was, it was enough effort just to get to this point to yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> to like, you know, exactly. And I think that the big lesson is like, when you do something like do it full, right? Do it as best you can. It means yeah. getting help if you need it. It means making checklists. It means like doing, doing the work involved. Uh, it can be a pain in, in the ass, but well, and you're you're yeah. bleeding into another concept, mm -hmm. which I also like. Uh, Ron Swanson has a quote: "Whole ass one thing, don't half ass two things." That's perfect. Yeah. So that's that goes hand in hand a little bit. I think so. I think you're ready for another concept. Let's do a then. final card here and see what it says. Hopefully, something explosive. Mm -hmm. We yeah. are looking at the Pareto principle. Um, it says for many outcomes. 80% of the consequences come from 20% of the causes. I need to think about that one. <laughs> yep. So for many outcomes, 80% of the consequences come from 20% of the causes. Okay. So identify where your weak points are. Exactly. All your inputs, just a few of them are going to cause most of the problems. And we've experienced this in studio building and you experience this in music writing in any, yeah. any field. Like, it's very rare that every single thing goes wrong and it's a huge Everything disaster. is not equally yeah. guilty. It's usually like a big disaster, but it comes down to some one or two things. Yeah. And that yeah. goes back to a process too, like checklist. If something yeah. checklist as well. If something is like clearly causing a lot of problems and you just have it because you feel like you have to, maybe it's worth losing. Exactly. This can even be applied to like, hey, I'm trying to arrange a song with a bunch of riffs and you just can't get that one riff to plug into right. the spot, maybe you're, maybe it's a round peg in a square hole or vice versa, I don't know which one it is, but yeah. But like, exactly, you gotta come to that conclusion and decide and save yourself time. Um, and that actually and, yeah. touches on, a, my friend sent me a song or track they're working on yesterday and I had some notes for it. All of it was nitpicky notes, mm -hmm. like none of it was like, it sounded good, mm -hmm. but I was like, the drums, all sound separate. Like they don't sound like they're mixed properly. If I had to guess they were fake. And mm -hmm. she was like, yeah, they're fake. Uh, and I, and we, she was like, we were working on it. And I was like, well, just wash it out. Like it was a really bright recording. Just mm -hmm. like wash it out, try to blend it and lose some of them, like mm -hmm. simplify. Um, not that I'm like the fixer. No, but, but you gave like general points that make yeah, sense. Yeah, but it seemed yeah. like that was a good thing that she was already having problems with, yeah. that they already knew about. And I was like, well, lose it. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, that concept can apply to really anything. Yeah. Like a lot of these can, but yeah, real life example there. Yeah. And it, it, it comes down to like when you're creating and writing, I think just, just make as much stuff as you can and yeah. then apply that process, apply that filter, apply that. Yes, no, yes, no. And, uh, you will, you will by nature of sieving down your, all of your content, some of which is not going to be good. Not everything everyone does is amazing, of course, but you'll filter down and you'll, you'll be left with the few things that are very good. And I do yeah. find it is always easier to edit than it is to yes. add. Yes. Uh, that's advice I give people a lot too. Always. Try, try doing more and then taking away rather than doing less and then adding to it. Man. How much was this? Like a couple of 15, 20 bucks, something like that. Saved your life. It wasn't expensive. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a good, good investment. You just sit there and read these and you'll leave a, a much, much more encouraged. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, definitely. Well, let's wrap up with that. Like 
want to say thank you for for making it this in. far. Yeah, making yeah. it this far in the Sound Sagas. Uh, hopefully, we've given you some context on who we are, what we want to do with the show, and what is going to be coming. Our next episode will be a deep dive into two bands, like we mentioned. Very different, but we'll get into some contrast and some mm-hmm. style and talk out our experiences. Uh, yeah, so yeah. smash that like and subscribe. Um, we have other channels. Follow us on YouTube on, at Sound Sagas TV. Uh, website, soundsagas.com. Facebook and Instagram, Sound Sagas. Absolutely. So we'll see you out there. We'll see you in the next one. Thanks, guys. Hey, man, what you do? I said, hey man, what you do? I'm by myself, a big fat and titty white boy. I said, hey man, what you do? I'm by myself, a snack.